So that brings us over to our tiger. Let's have a look at this tiger now and think about what we can use and where. So there's two ways that we could approach this, but the first thing I want to stress is be organized, be tidy about this. Let's create a collection called controls. It's called 001 because I already have a controls in this one. And let's just make sure that collection is highlighted. And you know, it doesn't mean it has to be selected blue all the time. It just means that you want to have this slight shadow around the box because that means that that is the active collection. And by being active, anything you create will be stored in there automatically. So there's a couple of ways I could approach this. I could create a Bezier curve, curve Bezier, and just quickly delete the vertex points that have been made. And now I have a pencil. I can come over here and just start drawing. There we are, I'm very happy. I'll then come back into object mode. I'll press F2. I'll call this pupil and it's the right. So I'll just call it pupil.r. Notice that the collection was highlighted. So pupil got put straight into there. Now I'll find pupil, which is there. Now it's gonna be hard to distinguish because there's more than one bone in this armature. So you will have to go into pose mode to select these bones. Don't go into edit mode because bones will always show up as octahedrals when they're in edit mode. Go into pose mode instead because that will enable you to select individual bones and change their displays. So I'm going to click on the pupil, this one here. I'm going to come down to bone properties. I'm going to go to the viewport display and under custom object I'll go and find the pupil that I created. There we go. And now my pupil is there at the back. So we have this problem that we just had a moment ago. So let's solve that problem now. First of all, bone to scale, no thank you. So now it's the same size, good. Second of all, rotation, minus 90, minus 90, there we go. Now it's not in the perfect spot, it's gone down there to the muzzle, minus 90. So the last step is to take the control curve and set the pivot point to be the same as the bone. So I'll go into edit mode, I'll select the pupil R, I'll select the tail of the pupil R, shift S, cursor to select it. I need to come out of pose mode, I'll find the control curve which is just there, I'll right click on it and I'll set the origin point to the 3D cursor. There we go. Now let's turn the tiger objects off so that we can see a bit more clearly and let's turn off the pupil.R. There we go. So as you can see, they are perfectly over the top of each other. You've got a controller there and you've got a bone there. It won't always work. Sometimes you have to do a bit of manual adjustment afterwards because certain bones will be pointing in different directions. So you see this one, for example, is pointing off to the left. So that will probably cause us some problems, but it's always a good place to start. So untick, scale to bone, rotate it on the x-axis, minus 90 degrees which totally depends on which way you're rigging, of course. If you were rigging this way, you would rotate on the y-axis, not the x. And set the pivot point of your curve to the tail of the bone that you're using. Now that we've been through that, I'm going to delete pupil. And notice that this bone has turned back into octahedral. That's because I deleted the curve, which is why we like to keep all of these curve controls in a collection safe, and why you do not want to accidentally delete those, because they, uh, they do need to be there in order for this to work. 